Hey again from Horton's Roseville, Minnesota campus, I'm Doug Sidney. Horton's Vintage HTS Advantage fan clutch is found on many middle-aged to older truck models. Today, we're gonna rebuild one using an HTS fan clutch repair kit. Everything we'll need is in this kit. Now let's tear into this now. Of course, make sure you have the correct replacement parts. A searchable listing of Horton and competitor parts is available at catalog.hortonww.com. Now the first step is to remove the fan drive from the engine. We've already done that and clamped the journal bracket in this vise. Next, remove the torque socket head cap screws from the air chamber using a wrench. Now, slide the air chamber assembly off. Now to pop this off, you might need to use something safely like a mallet. You can set the old piston friction disc aside because we have a brand new one in your kit. Next, check the inside of the air chamber for signs of dirt and foreign material. The air chamber should be clean and dry. If not, a problem may exist in the vehicle air system. You'll need to correct this before the fan drive is reinstalled. This O-shaped ring is called, you guessed it, an O-ring. Remove it and clean the surfaces it contacts. Inspect this seal, called a face seal, for signs of wear that may indicate dirt exists in the air system. If you find any dirt or oil, be sure to clean it before the fan drive is reinstalled. For demonstration purposes, we already have a clean air chamber assembly we'll use. Next, replace the face seal and tighten it to 50 inch pounds or 5.7 Newton meters. Now, lubricate the new O-ring and O-ring contact surfaces with the fresh lubricant supplied in the kit. Next, install the new O-ring into the air chamber. Okay, that's that step. We'll set this piece aside for later. The next step is to remove the hub. First, we remove and discard this lock nut from the journal bracket. Then, remove and discard the splined hub assembly from the journal bracket. Perfect. Next, we replace the pulley and pulley bearing. So we'll need to remove and save this journal spacer. Now slide the pulley and bearing assembly off the journal bracket, but make sure you fully support the pulley and press the bearings out of it. All these bearings are pre-lubricated and sealed, so you don't need to remove the seals to lubricate the bearings. Fully supporting the pulley again, press the new pulley bearing into place, paying close attention to the position of this lip inside the pulley.
Onto what's called the friction facing. Remove these head cap screws and the old friction facing like this. Then install the new friction facing. When you do this, make sure these tap lockup holes in the pulley are aligned with the lockup holes in the new friction facing, just like this. Alternately and evenly, tighten the Torx button head cap screws to between 35 and 40 inch pounds, or four to four and a half Newton meters. There should be new screws for you in your kit. Now let's reassemble the pulley and hub. Slide the pulley onto the journal bracket. This lip on the journal, the spacer must face toward the front of the fan drive. Like this. Clean the splined hub and lubricate the splines with this anti-seize and brush found in the kit. Now slide the splined hub onto the journal bracket. Now we'll slide the piston friction disc onto the splined hub. And replace and tighten the lock nut to 150 foot pounds, not inch pounds now, foot pounds. That's equal to 203 Newton meters. All right, we're getting there. Next, we need to replace the air cartridge and that O-ring we worked on before. So first, let's remove the retaining ring. And next, remove the cartridge assembly and U-cup. If this journal bracket bore gets dirty, be sure to clean it. Now take your O-ring lubricant from the kit and apply it to the outside O-rings of a new cartridge. Next, install the new cartridge into the journal bracket. Just like that. Install the new retaining ring to hold the new cartridge assembly in place. Fit it in and then press it down so those inner edges are locked in tight. Now this is important. The retaining ring must be fully seated in the retaining ring groove to keep the cartridge from moving. See how this retaining ring is beveled? The curved side must be installed facing away from the cartridge. Now lubricate the new O-ring with the fresh lubricants supplied in the kit. Install the new O-ring onto the piston friction disc. Last step, here we go. We're gonna put the air chamber back together, but you must use extreme care here. Otherwise, you could damage the O-ring. Put the air chamber on the piston friction disc carefully. Now, if you need to, 
you can use a smooth instrument to help you out. I'm just using a screwdriver. The same as before, we're going to install, then alternately and evenly tighten these head cap screws. These ones go to 180 inch pounds or 20.3 Newton meters. This next part is called the umbrella check valve. We need to install it into the air chamber bleed hole by pressing it into place with your thumb. Just like that. Now apply 90 to 120 PSI of clean air to the air inlet of the fan drive. This will make sure we've got proper engagement of the piston friction disc and friction material. And that is located right back here. Insert it in tight, turn it on. Now you're ready to put the fan clutch back on. Make sure you use SAE grade eight bolts and tighten them to manufacturer specifications. You'll need to check for proper air pressure to the fan drive too. We show you how to do that in our preventative maintenance video. There's a link in the description. Be sure to refer to all instructions that come with the repair kit. Horton clutches are designed specifically for many different vehicle models, so there may be some nuances to check in certain situations. Until next time, thanks for watching. Punch subscribe on our YouTube channel and visit hortonww.com for more information.